Okay, so we analyze the limit of the function and we realize that we have one vertical asymptote at x equal one, right? This is the vertical asymptote and one horizontal asymptote at y equal zero. So now at this point, we can move on and do the first derivative, right? So the first derivative y prime, I will take the quotient rule, use the quotient rule, we keep the bottom the same, the denominator the same. Take derivative, first one is one, we don't have to put in one. Minus, keep the numerator the same, time with the derivative of number denominator, which is three x squared minus zero constant, right? Now the bottom is x about three minus one, one of them square. So let's summarize the first derivative. We have x to power three minus one, see times that, minus three x to power three. On of this over x to the power three minus one square. So at this point, we can set this function equal zero to solve for reticum points. Remember the first previous lesson, right? So we're going to solve for the reticum point here. And how do we solve for reticum point? Remember, this is a fraction. But let me simplify this numerator first, okay? So this will become minus two x to the power three minus one because this, we subtract this, right? On of this over x to the power three minus one on of this to the power two. Now, if we set the numerator equal zero, so it doesn't matter what denominator is, right? What is, uh, what is our denominator is, we just set the numerator equal zero. The left side will equal the right side. So therefore we just solve for x based on the numerator, right? So minus two x to the power three minus one equal zero, move it over minus two x to the power three equal positive one, divide both sides by minus two x to the power three equal third root of minus one half. And therefore, x1 equal x2 equal x3 equal minus 0 0.79. So that's the root of our function for this value, right? Um, so that is the root point. So we have one root point at zero, minus 0 0.79. So now let's move to the next board. And we're going to do the second derivative for the next bar. Okay. So let's watch the next bar. So now I'm going to take the second derivative. What is the second derivative based on this one, right? So based on the first derivative. So keep the numerator the same. X to the power three minus one on of this square, keep the same. Derivative this one minus six x square minus zero, we don't have to do that, minus, now keep this the same. So minus two x to the power three minus one, keep the same. Derivative of the denominator, bring this in front. So time two, time with x to the power three minus one to power one, right? And then don't forget chain rule time with three x square. Okay, so now all of this will be equal x to the power three minus one and become power four. So at this point, this is a complicated function. I'm gonna show you how to simplify this function. So don't bother to expand this and tie them together. That will be too complicated. So what we, you, we should do here, we should look at for the common factor, right? This term is x to the power three minus one. This term is x to the power three minus one. So this become our uh, common factor. And we're going to choose the least power, which is x to the power three, we pull it out. This is our common factor. And the least power is power one. We take this power. 
inside, we're going to time with minus six x squared and also time with one of this because we have power two, we need one of this more. So x three, x to power three minus one, one more of them. Minus, put that side down. We have this one, so we're gonna put it in minus two x to the power three minus one. Two times three is six x squared. And this one, we already have it here, so we don't have to bother to put in. So that's how we use general common factor and we factor, we pull out the factor and we do whatever inside here, okay? Underneath this, we have x to the power three minus one, all of them to the power four. Now, you can figure out, this is the multiply bracket together. So it means we allow to cancel the same term. And this will reduce is to down to power three, right? And this gone. So at this time, simplify one more. We have minus six x squared. Let multiply through, okay? So minus six times x will become minus six x to the power five minus six x squared. And minus times minus is plus. Now this one, we change whatever the sign here, but we're going to time this with this, right? So six times two is 12, and that should be minus. However, because it's negative size, so it should be plus. 12 x to the power five, and this time this will be minus, but because the size, so become less as well, six x squared. All of this over the same denominator. Now we're gonna simplify one more time. Minus six x five, adding with 12 is six x five, so it becomes six x to the power five. Plus six x squared plus six x squared become plus 12 x squared. All of this over this denominator, x to the power three minus one, all of this to power three. So at this point, we know this is our second derivative after we simplify it. You can see the long way, but it becomes very short, right? So that's not bad, but let's see how we're going to deal with the reticle point. So at this point, I'm going to set the second derivative become zero to solve for the inflection point, okay? Over x to the power three minus one on of this power three. Again, we just care about the numerator, right? The denominator doesn't matter, okay? As long as the top one equals zero, everything becomes zero. So left side and right side. So now let's solve for x. So I'm gonna factor out the top. So six x squared times with x to the power three plus two, right, equal zero. So that tell us that x will be equal zero because this one equal zero. The first bracket, the second bracket will give us x to the power three equal minus two. And we take the third root of it to get down to x. So the third root of minus two, x will be equal, I mean, x1 are equal x2 are equal x3 will be equal minus 1.3. Okay, so, so this is the inflection point. Inflection and this value here is a critical point. So from the first derivative, we solve for critical point. From the second derivative, we solve for the uh, inflection point, right? 
So we got inflection point is minus 1.3 and we got three to point is minus 0 0.79. Now let's move on to the data table analysis for the next board. I am going to collect the read point and any point across for the X put in this table. So let's say this is negative infinity. And then we have, um, now we do have X equals zero, right? Because if we set the X equals zero here, this function is perfectly work well. So if X is zero, y also is zero because the top is zero, right? So this y function. So we know that x can be zero as well, but let's put minus 0 0.79 and then come to zero. And then what is the next one? Minus 1.3, right? Okay. So I'm not sure is it minus 1.3 or minus 1.2. Let me check. The root, make sure. Okay, so mass to root, go down to number four, then minus two. We got minus 1.25, which you draw off become minus 1.3. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, so now let's put in the interval and let's put in our derivative. So, what is our derivative? Why cry? Right, this is why the right first derivative. We're going what? We're going this one, right? So minus two x to the power three minus one on the top. At the bottom, x to the power three minus one. All of this is square outside. So now what is our y prime? Y prime is this one right here, right? So one down here. Okay, so I'm gonna put it in and then we'll show you later. So you see our oh, right right equals six x to about five plus how x square on of this over x to power three minus one on of this to power three. Okay, so now let's choose the testing point. So let's look back here. Now let's choose the testing point between negative infinity and negative 0 0.79, then our testing point will be minus one, okay? Between this and this, our testing point, we can choose uh, minus 0 0.5, right? Our testing point between this interval in zero to minus 1.3, we can choose our testing point is what? Minus, oh, I forget. Sorry about that. I should put this number in front of this. Oh, sorry for my silly mistake. Okay, so this is minus 1.3, so put load first, then minus 0 0.79 and then zero. So now between this and this number, we can choose minus two as a testing point. Between this and this, we can choose to what? Um, minus one, yes, correct. Minus one, between this and this, we can choose minus 0 0.5, right? Everything else here, as long as it's an x not one, x can be two or three or four, whatever you want to do, okay? Now, let's choose and see how this look like. We're gonna put in here. If we put minus two in the top, so minus two become minus a, minus a times minus two, which is positive 16 minus one, so the top become positive sign, right? Down here, it doesn't matter, this is negative, as long as you have a square outside of anything inside here, this function is gonna be positive anyway. So positive divided by positive, and positive divided by positive, of course, the answer will be positive, right? Now let's check this one. Minus one, if we put in here, it's minus, 
one times this is positive two minus one, so that also positive. Down here is only positive, so divide it will be positive as well. Minus zero point five, put in here. Okay, let's check how it look like. So minus 0 0.5 to the power 3. Minus 0 0.5 to the power 3. And time bridge, minus 2. And minus 1. So you get minus side, minus 0 0.75. So this is minus. And down here is, of course, positive. So this divide will give us negative value. Now two put in here. So two put in here is become negative. Negative eight times two, negative 16, minus one, minus 17. So this is minus divided by positive down here. So this the answer become negative. So let's analyze how the function look like. If you have a positive sign, which is the function y, our function f of x will be increasing. So I put the arrow right there, okay? So this function will be increasing. If this one is the same, so f of x will be increasing because the positive side. Negative side, so f of x will be decreasing. Negative, decreasing. So the arrow show the function intervals, right? Up and down, increasing and decreasing. Let's check this one. And this one, we're gonna analyze concave, right? Concave, okay, pattern. So if we put minus two in here, this become big minus, adding with 48 become minus. Yeah, so that will be positive. Uh, no, minus two in here, so minus 32 times six, because that's so negative, sorry, negative. And down here, because we have a power three, so this will become a negative and power three, so still negative. So negative divided by negative equal positive. Minus one, if we put in here, so it become minus six, minus six times adding with 12, so it become positive. Minus one put in here, minus, so minus. So that also become negative, right? Positive divided by negative. Yeah. So minus 0 0.5, let's do that. Minus 0 0.5 to the power of five, Time would six minus six adding with six, right? Um, adding with twelve times with zero point five square. Okay, so that number become positive as well. Positive. Okay. Mm. Try again. Minus zero point five to power five. We minus time with six. Negative. Adding with twelve times zero point twenty five. Yeah, it's positive divided by minus 0 0.5, put in here is minus, to power three is minus. So that's also become minus. Two positive, put in here, everything up here positive. Down here, eight minus one will be winning, so seven, so positive. So positive divide positive is positive. So that's our sign for the concave. Now, what it look like? We we'll have concave up, right? Because positive, this negative, so concave down. This negative, concave down. This positive, concave up. 
So what's this function look like? Can K up look like this? And we have inflection point at this point, right? Our inflection point. So we have can K up, okay? Then we have an inflection point here. So can K down. So we have inflection point and then can K down. And then continue can K down, right? And then between can K down and can K up, we have another inflection point in here. So that's down and then, no, uh, concave down. Okay, so on the way concave down and then chain into concave up. So concave down, concave up. So look like something like that, okay? So now when you sketch this function, you, I suggest to you, if you want to be accurate on of this three component, you can find the, the Y component of it, right? What I mean is, what I mean, I have to enjoy some part of this, okay? What I mean is you have the rhythmic component as minus one, three, as the value of X coordinate. To find Y coordinate, on what you do is, sub detail minus 1.3 in the original function, right, like that, and calculate the y. Whatever the y here equal, you put in here, right? So then you have accurate point. So that's one point. Another point is zero, which is zero. Another point is what? Minus 0 0.79, and calculate the y again then you get a point, right? So mark this point and sketch the function. Now, because this is a long video, so I don't want to bother to, um, I don't want to bother to go with you. I just show you the way you should calculate the point like that, right? So calculate the point like that and so put in the y value and get the, your shape of the function. Now. I'm going to do the shortcut. Now, I strongly um, advise you using sketching by hand first, follow the data table analysis, put on the coordinate, cool but then use the graphing calculator at the end, key in the function and check how the function look like. So I already key in the function here, let's drop it. So that is the function look like. So here look like the function across zero, Point zero zero, and there's the inflection point and going down here. This is concave up, so it concave up, and then at about zero point seventy nine minus zero point seventy nine, right? There is the inflection point going on here, so concave up, concave up, become concave down. Go to this one. Hmm, like something like that, right? And then go down like this, right? So that's the anti horizontal uh, vertical asymptote. And do we analyze the vertical asymptote from the left hand side limit a bit and from the right hand side limit a bit? Um, It seems that we're missing that one, but you know what I mean, right? So we can analyze when limit of this function x over x to power two minus one when x approach to one on the left and when x approach to one on the right. Then you get the limit will be on the left will be negative infinity. And on the right would be compost the infinity. And that's why on the right hand side, it go like this. And get along with the horizontal asymptote and vertical asymptote. There's an inflection point going on here between these two functions. So up and then transition now. So that, that's just how it looked like, okay? And you might not see it because the white spot so I'm gonna move. 
I'm going to turn off the light, see what happens. You still have the white spot there? No. So that's the shape of the function look like, right? Okay, so I end the long video here, our video here, and I hope you enjoy my long work. It's so boring, right? Because we have a lot of work going on, but at least I show you how to take derivative for the complicated function. And finally, we got the second derivative, simplify it. We got on the beta value, we analyze the function. This is the main point I want to show you in this course for curve sketching function. And don't forget, we check it by using technology. But we don't want technology to replace math. You still have to know how to analyze the data. Uh, look at the interval of concave up, concave down, inflection point, blah, blah, blah. We have to find out. So all of this we have, must do by hand. And then after that, we can check and sketch the function to see our work. So that's the way we do math. Anyway, thanks for watching for a long, long lesson. And see you in the next question. Now, the next video, I will get right into the application of extreme value, right? Now you know what is the minimum value and maxima value, we get into the application later. So you see, I organize the lesson by the sequence step one to step two, step three, and connect them logically, how I explain the where the derivative come from, the limit. After we do limit, we learn derivative, and we learn application of derivative. And now we learn how to sketch the maximum function, minimum function level, so we can get into the application of extreme value of the maxima, maximum production level benefit or minimum the production level for our costs involved for purchasing whatever in finance and a lot more in other application as well. So you will see. So stay tuned for the next video. Get right into the application of extreme value. And thank you for watching. Don't forget to give me a thumb to support my spirit and cheer me up <laughs> for my hard work. Thank you. Bye for now, everyone.